good morning. Or afternoon, if you're watching later on. Evening, late at night, whenever you come to join us, welcome. We're gathered in a new room, as it may, this, this is the first time those joining us from home will be able to see. We're gathered in our right pavilion today. And yet, church is just as church in this room as it is in our beloved sanctuary. We gather as the first congregational church of South Portland, Maine, a Christian community loving, welcoming, and serving. And whenever we gather, we remember together these words. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And now, friends, please join me in this morning's call to worship. Righteous one, you are ever listening. We come boldly, lifting our praise to you, because we know you hear us. Bringer of justice, you would reveal truth to us. You help us to see how things are and how they can be. Eternal God, you persist in love and justice. We want to persist in love and justice too. Our opening hymn this morning is Restless Weaver, number 520, although you'll just see it on the screen. joy to have you here in person today and have you joining us online in a delayed stream today. It really is wonderful to gather together, to dream together, and to be Christ's church together. Let us remember the promise that Jesus gave us. He gave us his peace. And it is my prayer for you that the peace of Christ be with you. 
Thank you. And when that peace prevails, when that peace is in us and shared by us, that peace goes out into the world and the world is ever transformed and changed. So may that peace go out into the world to change and to shine Christ's light. I'm here today also to share the message for children of all ages. And today, Pastor Steve will be talking about perseverance. So I have a question for you. I hope it's an easy one. Have you ever been a child? <laughs> have you ever been? <laughs> right, I thought I was going to have to repeat that, but I heard someone in the back say, I still am. And that's a beautiful thing, right? We're all God's children. And no matter how old we are, we are our young selves inside. So let me ask you to think back, those of you who are no longer children, uh, to a time when you were young and you asked your parents for something. Did it sound like this? Mom, please, can I? Can I? May I? May I? May I have this? May I do this? Please, 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 Mom, please? Did it sound like, or wait, let me, okay, let me talk to the parents in the room and grandparents. Have any of you ever heard that? Yes, right? Because children are nothing if not persistent. In the passage we'll hear today, we're told to be persistent in prayer. And Pastor Steve is going to unpack that for us. But I want you to remember that persistence pays off, right? Because sometimes when a child asks for something, it's never occurred to the parent. Let me see if I can get, like if I had top five answers on the board here. When a child said that to you, what did you say back? Did you say yes immediately? Depends. De depends. De how about the, the dreaded, we'll see? Anybody say that to their kids? Oh, I heard that all the time as a child. But the truth is you're planting a seed sometimes. And sometimes the parents will consider it, or the guardians, or the grandparents, or the adults in the room. And then sometimes it comes to be by the grace of God. So be persistent. Be persistent in all that your heart desires, whatever that desire is. And here ends my message for all of God's children. And let's move on into prayer time. May the love of God surround us. May the peace of Christ comfort us. May the strength of the Holy Spirit sustain us. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. Today I ask you to join your hearts with mine as we pray for many, many here in our congregation and beyond our congregation to the communities we live in and beyond those communities to the wider world. There is a lot of pain and yet there's also a lot of joy. So first, I invite you to join your heart and pray for the joy of rekindled connection, the joy of seeing folks that we haven't seen in a while, the joy of being together. I invite your prayers of joy for new children and grandchildren in our midst and those who are across the country yet close in our hearts. I invite your prayers for all that is good, and true and right in this world. I invite your prayers for all of the light bearers, all of the people who shine Christ's light. And I invite your prayers today also for Carolyn F., who is, um, she is dealing with, um, she had a passing in her extended family. Let's hold her in our hearts and send peace and love to Carolyn and her family. I invite your prayers for Peggy M., who um, is dealing with a broken bone in her hand, and she's also got COVID at this time, so that's a double whammy. So let's send her prayers of peace and healing. Let's send those prayers of love and healing to all in our congregation, in our community, and in our world right now who are dealing with COVID-19 or the after effects of COVID-19. I invite your prayers for the people of the world, the people of the world who have seen dreams shattered, have had promises broken, who are hurting. I invite your prayers for all of the people who are struggling, struggling with addiction or mental illness or financial struggles. I invite your prayers for those who are having physical struggles at this time, a new diagnosis or a test upcoming. But on the other side of that, let me also invite your prayers of thanksgiving for those who have had good test results recently 
and are on the path to healing right now. I'm going to invite a moment of sacred silence now for you to share with God whatever is on your heart and whatever is present in your mind. God, there are so many needs. You hear them before we say them. You know us better than we know ourselves. We give you thanks and praise that you are always with us, O oh Lord. Send your healing touch upon those who need it. Bring your peace. Bring your peace to this world. May it surround us. May it invigorate us. May it change us. And may we transform to go forth to transform the world. We pray this and all of our prayers in Christ's precious name, including the prayer, and he taught words like these. Our Father and Mother in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I hope you don't mind my singing with the mask on, but my glasses fog up. <laughs> And then I'll just be singing anything. <laughs> Anointed by God, may then create peace, where justice shall roll down like waters, and peace like an ever-flowing stream. We'll build a land where we bring the good tidings to all the afflicted. We'll give them garlands instead of ashes. Oh, we'll build a land where peace is born. Come build a land where sisters and brothers, anointed by God, may then create peace where justice shall and peace like an ever-flowing stream. Come build a land where the mantles of praises reside once faint and once weak, where like oaks of righteousness stand her people. Oh, come build the land, my people we seek. Come build the land where sisters and brothers anointed by God may and create peace where justice shall roll down like 
waters and peace like an ever-flowing stream. Please join me now in this morning's prayer for illumination. Open our hearts and minds, O Lord, by the gift of your Holy Spirit, so that as the word is read and proclaimed, we may hear what you have to say to us today. Amen. Our reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. And it's often called the parable of the widow and the unjust judge. But I will, um, I'll leave it up to you whether or not that's an accurate name. Right? You may or may not think so by the time we're done. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my accuser. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Here ends this reading from the Gospel of Luke. This book does a lot of things. It shares wisdom, it tackles complex ideas, it tells the story of God and humanity, an ever-evolving story that we're still living out today. Over the course of many years, the path followed by God's people is described in the Hebrew Scriptures. And there is no shortage of speed bumps, no shortage of challenges and difficult choices, and yet God's people persevere. In our Christian New Testament, we learn that one day Christ came and as a human man, Jesus, he lived and shared God's love with the world, and as he did, he faced hardship, loss, and even death. Yet Christ returned to life, and Christ urged their friends to persevere despite the fear they felt and the real dangers they faced. Today, in the wake of a pandemic still so felt by so many. In a world where value is often measured in gigabytes, views and lights, where distance is measured in hours or minutes, where it used to take lifetimes, and where new questions of right or wrong weigh on us and demand we make a choice, we too must persevere in love as Christ has taught us. But in this rapidly changing world, that path is not always so easy to follow. And this book, this one right here, this does a lot of things. It presents questions to those who come prepared to hear them. Questions whose answers are in Christ if we come prepared to see them. This book, just like this life, is a glimpse of God. But its limitations, born of the human hands and hearts that compiled it, demand that we do not simply absorb it, but that we engage it, enter into dialogue with it, and find that place where the profound and the mundane meet, where we end and God begins. And again, spoiler alert, that place is in Christ. In the passage from this passage that we just heard from the Gospel of Luke, you may not have noticed it, but the Gospel writer steps in and gets in front of Christ's parable and provides an interpretation before we even hear it. 
It is Luke that chooses perseverance in prayer as a focus, and yet by doing so, the author of this gospel may have managed to obscure other potential interpretations of the text. I want to try an imagination exercise with you, something a little different. Take a deep breath, if you will, and close your eyes for a moment. Imagine in front of you hanging on the wall a huge canvas and painted on it in vibrant, bright colors. Right in the center of the canvas is the face of a jungle cat, a jaguar. Its teeth are bared and yellowed, there are weapons drawn and made ready. Its eyes wild and wide, its ears laid flat back against his head, held low and outstretched on a neck of rippling muscles beneath a coat of short, coarse hair. Dappled like the shadows beneath the great green trees where it likes to stalk its unknowing victims. Before its immense jaws, its forepaws are stretched like knives cutting through the air. It leaps, and though you are fairly certain it is just a painting, you can't help but see the hunger and the wildness in its eyes, eyes that are fixed in this moment on you. Now before we take another look at this painting, I want you to take one more breath. What if the picture, the painting that was just described is more and less than I made it out to be in my description? The face of the cat, its impressive physique, its imposing nature, and its position mid-leap is accurate in its technical description, but let's take another look at that painting. Close your eyes and turn again to the huge canvas hanging on the wall where the jaguar is presented in such realistic detail. And now, look past the cat, past the leaves that seem to grow from all angles in this dense jungle setting, through, I mean, though, much smaller, on account of distance, you suppose, there's a person in the background. No, it's several people, and there are dogs with them, big, powerful dogs on leashes pulled tight. Their mouths are opened in various poses that evoke the sound of howling and growling and barking, and the people have long well-worn rifles in their hands, almost mistakable as sticks from this distance, except for the one held to the shoulder of the person farthest to the front of the group, fire erupting from its muzzle. And now that you see that, you notice the tuft of leafy green that seems to explode right by the great cat's head. With all those details in mind, and those we noticed the first time we looked at the painting, that menacing cat so set on devouring you a moment ago, now seems more fixed on escape. Its eyes wide, outstretched paws and bared fangs more resemble a creature experiencing terror than a predatory hunger. Let's leave that painting now and return to this little room, safely out of the jungle. The way that information is conveyed, how it is presented, can have a truly powerful effect on how it is received. By presenting the parable of the widow and the judge as they did, the author of Luke makes it clear and obvious what the interpretation of it must be, and yet another look raises some questions. For one, have you ever noticed, have you ever noted Jesus wasting words? The author of the parable of the mustard seed was capable of conveying great meaning in a few words, and yet this parable contains some words that suggest additional or alternative meanings from that of persevering in prayer. For instance, the word that is translated and spoken as justice in the the scriptures this morning could very well and may have been more akin to vengeance which is a very different word. Where justice suggests a balanced, fairly muted consequence, vengeance suggests a punitive revenge. 
In verse 5, it's translated as, Yet because the widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. It may have actually been something like, So that she does not finally come and slap me in the face. Okay. On account of a word choice used in descriptions of boxing matches, Dr. Amy Jill Levine suggests that a major purpose of a parable is to challenge its listeners and to challenge them to walk away from the par and I, ugh, excuse me <laughs> to challenge its listener and to walk away from this parable this morning with a message about being persistent in prayer is not being challenged. It's beautiful, but it's not a challenge. That message, uh, I believe, uh, is very important to be persistently in prayer. It's almost too easy an idea, though. We're just seeing the face of things presented by Luke, if we accept that as the only takeaway. More that might come up with a little additional consideration? I wonder. With a little bit more help from some of Dr. Levine's observations, I came up with a few ideas about this passage to get us deeper into what it may have to say to us. For one, the widow. This is an interesting character because she isn't the weak, independent part of society we often think of biblical widows as being. She inspires fear in the minds of powerful officials. After all, she may just come and slap him in the face. She advocates for her own concerns, and unlike many of the other widows highlighted in Scripture, she may even have a darker intention as suggested by her persistent demand of vengeance. This is coupled with the fact that the judge, this doler of secular consequence, made out to be without interest in God or humanity, is swayed by the actions of the widow when those actions threaten his safety. Is this a parable intended to open our eyes and minds to the possibility of unlikely or unsuspected uh, sources of change? When a widow can sway a judge to her needs through persistence alone, it may very well be. Is it a parable intended to caution against categorizing folks based on assumptions and stereotypes? When a widow can not only achieve her will, but may indeed be in search of violent vengeance, it very well may be. Is it indeed a lesson in the power of persistence possibly even the power of persistent prayer? Maybe. Is it something else entirely? Maybe. The answer to all these could be yes. In fact, they may all be correct simultaneously. There is no rule that says it can have, a parable can have only one message. That is one of the powers of a parable, to share wisdom and to challenge preconceptions, and none is confined to one single point. We all bring our eyes and our ears to these stories. So we all come away with something a little bit different. The binding thing is that as Christians, we never come to the text alone. We're always with Christ, and we are always together. For ours is a relational faith. Our insights become threads that are woven into the church, our church, articulated in our words and in our deeds. If I had to give you one takeaway this morning, though, it might be this. Christ calls all of us into relationship and through our faiths shares, the love, th shares love throughout the world. This means that we need we each need to bring ourselves to this conversation, to this relationship as well. Do not simply take another's interpretation of what Christian is as gospel, pun intended, without feeling how it fits into your life. If you differ from a friend in some interpretation, do not let that drive you apart, but weave your faiths together in community. Through us, the world can get a view of God. 
just as we glimpsed that painting together this morning. And in the same way, if we limit the view we share to one single perspective, we may paint a portrait that inspires fear or unwelcome to those that we show. So be persistent in prayer, but also in questioning and in sharing your image of God with one another and with others so that we might come to share an image of God that makes room for everyone. Amen. Please join me in the unison prayer. God of love and right and justice, persist at our side and through our lives. Turn us from the expected and the practiced to the path you intend for our church. Re-energize our words and traditions with the power to inspire kindness, generosity, mercy, and love. Show us the places where church is more than a Sunday service, where it is life lived for you from the grocery store to the polling places, to the unexpected places where we witness your holy face. Nothing we can do on our own is enough, and yet everything we do as your people is exactly what you require. Drive us to persist in you, as you persist in all of us. Amen. Please join us in the closing hymn. You'll notice the words on the screen behind me.
few announcements to make. Today we've been thinking about perseverance. This concept can feel especially important as we consider the various ministries of this church. Okay, all right, <laughs> thank you. That serve the needs of the folks from a wider community. One of those ministries, our children's closet, clothing ministry that provides cho ch clothing for children in need, could use your help. The children's closet is completely out of winter clothes in sizes newborn through six months and is in serious need of winter clothes in size 9 to 24 months. Any donations made would be greatly appreciated. In lieu of donations, you can also send a check to the church with the children's closet in the memo line. Opportunities to gather and to be the church together can help a community like this one to persevere through the interesting times like these. One beloved annual tradition that brings many together here at the First Congregational Church, the Holly Days Bazaar, is a source of joy and income for the church and an opportunity to connect with those outside our walls. The Bazaar is back, thankfully, after several years. So come and join us in the fun on Saturday, December 3rd, from 9 until 2. For ways to contribute to the bazaar, please see the weekly word or contact Lynn Lancelot for more information. And as you can see over here, the chimes are adding a joyful, no joyful noise to our um, wonderful service. But we need more players. If you have any interest, Terry would love to hear from you. His email is terry at fccucc.org. Thank you very much. And I would add that Deb Riley is part of our stewardship committee, and it's fortuitous that I happen to be standing here with a microphone because I'd like to say a word about stewardship now. So if I could just slide right over here because I might, I might start gesturing because I'm very excited about this. I want to tell you what you support when you support this church, and I want to tell you that through a story. A long time ago, there was a king who had everything, and he promised that if someone could put on a suit of armor and climb a hundred steps high to the top of his castle, they could have everything they wanted as well, whatever that was. And you can imagine the people of the community lined up to take this challenge on, right? One by one, they put on this suit of armor, but they could barely get up one step. And soon it, it became heard that it couldn't be done, right? I mean, some people wanted vacations, others wanted cars, others wanted to win the lottery. They had all of these desires of their heart. In fact, there was somebody who wanted a beach house, and I can relate to that, right? Really wanted to get up there, but, you know, a, st a half a step was as much as they could take. And then a young person came by and said, you know, that suit's awfully big, but I have a really big important thing on my heart. Do you know what I want? What, what I want, I want the lonely to have company. I want children not to be afraid. I want places that have wars to have peace. This is the desire of my heart. And it's so important that I'm gonna put on that big heavy suit. And that young person got that suit on and went up that first step and it just about broke him. Sweat's pouring down on the inside of that. But he said, this is so important. Let me take another step. And he thought, just one more step. And he got to the third step, and he noticed something really strange. It, it was a little bit easier on that third step. And the fourth step got even easier, and the fifth step. And it was just like he was climbing, practically running by the time he got to the top. And the king met him at the top and said, I have a secret to share with you. Those first couple of steps... They were just hard because those are the burdens that you carry in your life. But after that, there was a magnet. From step three on, that magnet was pulling you in that suit and making it easier and easier for you to get up to the top. And so I wish for you and I grant you your wishes, the desires of your heart, peace where there is war, comfort and company for the lonely. I grant you food for everyone who needs it and clothing Friends, just think about this. Think about that suit as being the burdens of everyday life and the magnet as God pulling you, drawing you towards, persisting. You persisted through the tough times and you drew closer and closer to God and God gives you what you need. This, these desires, peace, hope, 
meeting needs, not only in our community but beyond it, that is what you support when you support church. You support ministry and mission. That is why it's so important that you make your offerings and your pledges and your love donations. And for those of you here, we have a, a box uh, as you exit today after you have some coffee and snacks. And for those of you watching at home, you can send your donations to us at First Congregational Church, 301 Cottage Road in South Portland, 04106. And again, you're supporting ministry and mission, so thank you very, very much. And now, friends, as we wrap our time up in this space, in this moment, go out from here and persist in your faith. Share what you've heard today, what you've heard over your time spent as, as church with others. Let them know of the love that is here and the love that can be found in God. Persist in this, and we can spread God's love to the whole world. May this come to pass. Amen. Amen.